Good morning, sir. Good morning, Kushbu. Yes. So my first question to you is about your childhood. If you could please share, how was your childhood like, sir, and the experiences? Childhood, like all others, <clears throat> was the most golden period of my life. It all started in a place called Talche, where I was born. Incidentally, my father as well as my grandfather both worked in the same company called National Coal Development Corporation. Separated by a few kilometers in terms of our houses. But most of the time I used to spend in my grandfather and, and used to spend a lot of time with my grandmother as well. The main attraction of the thing is first the grandmother and grandfather. Yes. Secondly, he had a huge, big garden, lot of fruit trees, flowering plants, kitchen garden. And then at the backyard, we had a, a stable for cows. We had a couple of number of cows and I still remember two of them, Gita and Sita. A lot of milking in the morning. Uh, it's almost like a farmland. Hence, and my grandmother used to cook delicious food. So, most of the time I was in the garden, climbing trees, swinging from one branch to another, eating various kinds of fruits. And, and so, that has left a very indelible impression and it has brought me very close to environment as well. Since uh, it was a remote place and it was a cold field, there wasn't any good schools, especially English medium school wasn't there at all. So my father thought of sending me to his native place with his relations. At the age of eight or so, I had gone to a place called Ambur in Tamil Nadu, where I studied in a typical municipality school with tile roofs, no benches to sit, midday meal, at that time Kamraj was the chief minister. And, uh, there are also a lot of environmental surroundings, a uh, lot of trees all around, especially a lot of tamarind trees. And you know, I have a great liking to climb these trees, pluck fresh green tamarind, raw tamarind, and eat there like a monkey in the branches of the tree. <laughs> and then we also used to wait till this tamarind used to get ripen and that was a fruit also we used to enjoy. So this was a kind of an experience and then of course uh, my father got transferred to a place called Dhanbad and there he said there is a good school so I had to go back to yes. my parents. Dhanbad is also a cold field uh, full of dust, uh, very rough roads you'll find only big trucks and a lot of wagons all around. And so a lot of uh, labors, particularly labor intensive uh, workers. Above all, that childhood was a great blessing to me in terms of education. I studied in a Jesuit school run by the fathers of Maryland, USA. So I got a exposure to American culture, American literature, and all my teachers were Americans, so American accent also to some extent I adopted. The school provided everything that I wanted as a holistic education, not only good academics and also a lot of technologically integrated experience because these American fathers used to bring a lot of electronic devices. There was an internal circuit TV also, where they used to show us how they could capture our image and show there. It was a, a very good experience in terms of uh, learning from people who were quite advanced at that point of time. That was the most uh, memorable part of my life in childhood. That's wonderful, sir. At that time, you got the exposure to electronic devices. 
I think I can proudly say that we also got a diamond out of the cold fields <laughs> that you studied in, sir. Yeah. Moving on to the next question, sir. Uh, sir, you have mentioned about how the teachers captured you all and showed it to you in your TVs at that point in time. So would you say that that also created a passion towards photography in your life? Yeah, in fact, uh, school had a photography club. And uh, not only uh, there was a dark room where we used to develop films and print uh, the photographs, uh, but also they provided us with uh, American Kodak cameras for us to use the camera and uh, use the various techniques of photography and learn photography and the skills of photography. Our physics teacher, he taught the chapter on light with so vivid experience of experiential learning in those days by bringing in live camera, showing how the light passes. And uh, we had a projector to show on the screen, which is uh, so advanced in terms of technology. The entire passion for photography started from the school days. That's wonderful, sir. And we see that it still continues. And uh, you have been a very good guidance to all the upcoming photographers that we have in this school, sir. We did start a photography club in yes. this school also. Yes. Uh, but then uh, before the pandemic, but then uh, again we need to restart it maybe in the next session. Yeah. And sir, we see that so many of your school experiences have influenced you in one way or the other. So are there any other influences of your school or your surroundings back in those days? One thing I told you about the American culture, American taste, American literature, so fascinated me many of these American literature like The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, which where more than often I selected as an elocution piece uh, for not only in my school days but also for my students. In addition to that, uh, our colony, particularly the place where it lived, it's a township, project was uh, in collaboration with the Polish government. And many of my classmates, we used to go by bus, were Polish. To a great extent, I learned a bit of Polish language also, uh, experienced their food and culture, and more importantly, their style of living. So, Poland had an influence in me also. Wonderful, sir. Thank you for sharing such wonderful experiences about your childhood, sir. So, sir, in addition to what we have spoken now, you mentioned about photography as your passion, and we see you as a passionate educationist. Do you have any other passions that you would like to share with us, sir? Yeah, people often say teaching is a passionate job. But I cultivated that passion. I, I just, just did not say it is a passion. For that, I had to work very hard because, again, the schools in Coldfield, of course, the school is a very reputed school. We had library, but a remote place, not enough resources. So, I used to teach Shakespeare's plays and uh, prose and poem, of course, in, in an ICC school. Uh, very often I used to find ways to go beyond the boundary to see how I can create the class more interesting or the lesson more interesting. So, in a weekend I used to go to Calcutta taking the overnight train and go to College Street where there is a huge pile of books, second hand books. I used to collect a lot of books. Spend the day at Victoria Memorial under the shade of a tree, thumping through these pages, waiting for my evening train, and then go back, use this as a resources to prepare my notes and deliver my classes. Yeah. Shakespeare play, as you are an English teacher, should know that it is not to be taught, it has to be enacted. Yes. Okay. If you teach Shakespeare, it will be very dry verses, but if you enact, then they will understand in terms of dramatization. So I used to be very much involved. Even poem also I used to enact. And prose also where situation comes I used to enact. I felt that dramatics, the art of acting was naturally coming from me yes. when I tried to 
visualize in that way. So, passion for uh, writing. When I was uh, teaching the students, I realized that if the students can be so engaged in terms of listening and appreciating it, why can't I also write and share my experiences with many more students across the country if a book can be published. So the first set of books I published when I was a teacher and then later on when I moved on to another place uh, in Orissa to take up a job as a vice principal. For your information, I taught in one school for 16 years. I never changed the school. 16 years I was in one school. The next is 14 years in presidency. What? <laughs> After that, uh, I got the opportunity to be a vice principal of a very beautiful school run by Ferro Alloys Corporation. It's again a company school. Here I tried to pursue writing further, though administration came in a bit yes. along with teaching, but still I had some time. Vijaya, my wife, is, was very good in typing. Yes. So we bought one typewriter, Prima, Godre's Prima typewriter yes. on an installment basis. I used to write, I enjoy writing in long hand and she used to type. Yes. In that way, we completed another book uh, that is an abridged version of uh, Merchant of Venice, which was published by Sultan Chand and Sons. It was widely used across the country. So my ambition to reach out to many more students through books and it was well received so much so later on, much later when I went to one of my friend in Bangalore, I found this book and I asked how is that your book in your house? says my son used in Bishop Cotton School. So that means uh, when I was in Bihar, my book has already reached yes. Bangalore. When, when uh, I was uh, in the verge of uh, retiring much earlier, say 2017-2018, I visualized to start a school of my own, almost in line with the Santhi Ketan pattern. The the environment has such an influence that I want children also to be in that environment. Yes. So anyway, but I had a dream school, dream of how to bring up the children in a residential school, developing the culture and the values that they miss nowadays, and especially in an environmental, the green environment, away from the, the noise of the city. And also, bal give them a balance of the city life and also in the lap of nature. So, with that vision, I wanted to start, but unfortunately, that has remained as a dream. Well, I always believe that uh, we can do further. That belief is very strong. Yes, sir. And on that belief, sir, would you also be continuing to write further? Yes, yes. Uh, see, there is a lot of uh, experience that I have gained inside in terms of uh, sc school education, school administration, people management, manpower management, financial management, so many things. But above all, the curriculum, curriculum transaction, human relationship, administrative services has become so intrinsic as part of my life and there are so many learning experiences that uh, I carry uh, having worked with very eminent personalities, eminent uh, uh, people, be it educationists or administrators uh, across the country, that there is always a learning experience when we work with people. So. Probably I will write down all my experiences, both what I was able to achieve and also what are the struggles that we have to go through in an educational institution and how to resolve it and how to maintain yourself in times of the vicissitudes of 
of a school administration uh, and many more and also very suggestive features of how education could be much better if there is more empowerment in the educational field, more empowerment and respect for teachers, more empowerment to the leaders. Uh, they can do marvels. Uh, I have seen it personally also that the more we give empowerment, guidance and carry everyone with you, I think uh, the education can reach much higher as, as, as our institution board says, the greater heights. You had mentioned about uh, staying in presidency for 14 years. Is there a particular reason what made you take this decision? I had been principal over the years and more often than not I used to step in as a principal and step out as a principal. But here the chairman gave a very unique opportunity of starting a school. Though it has been a dream later on to start my own school, but I got the experience of starting a school right from the scratch and uh, to what it is now. He has been a great support. In fact, I would say I am in presidency for 14 years is only because of him. Because of him is one, because I am involved in a growth of a school. So when you are in a growth of a school, it is not right to leave midway. Okay. So come what may come, stoically I went ahead, built this school with his support. And his support was immediate and with a lot of guidance which I got, which helped me to develop the school. Of course, the school developed in a very short time in terms of its gestation period. But then there were many more things to be done uh, in terms of cultural uh, development, in terms of developing the culture among the students as well as teachers to have a sense of belonging yes. and uh, which should be a kind of a motivation for them uh, to and also an opportunity for them to grow. Uh, I More than often I always tell my teachers that you should not be like a, a stagnant pool, you should be like a running stream where you should try to gather as much new experiences like a running stream and grow to become something in life. Had I stayed what uh, re remained in the same school, today I would not be what I am. I pursued, I worked hard, I, I grabbed opportunity and made use, best use of that opportunity. So in that way, the teachers are a potential leaders of tomorrow uh, because they understand a school so well that uh, they can use their experience to be a very influential leaders who can carry people with them. So, definite thanks to Dr. Nassar Ahmed and thanks a lot to you, sir, for bringing up the school to what it is today. And uh, I see that you have mentioned about empowering teachers and you've also mentioned how teachers can be influential leaders. So, sir, is that also a part of your future plans? Yeah, very much. In fact, uh, I am thankful to our chairman who permitted me, since I have started a trust, he did permit to use that trust uh, detached from the school in terms of conducting certain workshops or webinars. So this pandemic gave an opportunity for me to conduct a lot of webinars. Uh, so far I have conducted about 30 plus webinars on various topics very closely related to the teacher's career and more often more than that new initiatives by CBSE and also the pandemic times, the parent-student relationship and all that. Uh, in all these 30 or 35 webinars, I have come in touch with nearly 4,000 teachers across India, right from Punjab to Kanyakumari and even teachers from Andaman and Nicobar Islands and teachers from Middle East. So, I have with me now 4,000 teachers with whom I want to work 
support them and mentor them in terms of through webinar or through a digital platform and if any time i could achieve at least 10% in terms of creating leaders for tomorrow that would be again a great fulfillment in me for having contributed further to the cause of education that's that's a very wise thought sir also would you like to tie up with certain other schools now that you would be stepping down from well uh, i have a thought about that very seriously first of all i i need a break for some time to think uh, very coolly because all these years something was always reeling in my mind yes. i will settle my mind to settle down first and once it is settled down probably innovation creative and thoughts will develop and definitely as i said a teacher remains as a teacher so only the principal retires i may retire as a principal but i will remain as a teacher to the community to the teachers and all those who seek my help as a teacher i personally feel blessed sir that there are people like you in our uh, teaching fraternity uh, moving on to our next question sir so uh, sir there are a lot of influences uh, that you have had to become a very good educator that you are now apart from the influences you've shared already who else has influenced you to become what you are today sir the only other person who has a very integral part of my life uh, my career my growth is uh, vijaya vijaya has been a, a constant motivator not only in terms of my career but also to pursue much higher goals in life as i said earlier that vijaya used to type when i used to write so the book is also attributed to her success i think i may not have shared a few things of my childhood and one part of my childhood is that i lost my mother at a very young age maybe i was in class 7 or something losing a mother at that such a tender age though my father was well to do had a very good house good education but somewhere things did not go in the right direction and uh, i would have become something in life for which i don't regret now let me not talk about it uh, i feel i had a very brilliant career reached a stage where i think i will leave behind a very good institution and a team to take it forward so what i lost in terms of the absence of my mother i got it in terms of my life with vijaya she is more than caring quite obsessed to see that i eat the right food right time and uh, take medicines regularly even this dress attire that you see is a, a very important part of the culture that she developed in spite of her busy schedule she will iron my clothes and keep it ready for me to wear in spite of her busy schedule in school she will go back and cook the best possible food that i could have i mean she was so dedicated in terms of uh, it's all because probably uh, our relationship is too filled with lot of love and respect for each other so vijaya continues to be my motivator vijaya will be continue to be uh, my partner in whatever i would like to do in future so sir, is there anything that you would like to share about your daughter mrs lata mishra yeah lata is uh, my daughter born from my heart rather our heart vijaya is also a part of it but i was very passionate and attached to her like probably any father would do to his daughter uh 
so it's a it's a great uh, memorable journey that we had together right from the time she was born till i gave her away as a kanya daan to my son in law at this point i would also like to say proudly that i have a, a beautiful daughter a very handsome son in law though i don't have a son i feel i do not miss the the absence of a son he is so caring loving and uh, has become a very integral part of my our culture also uh, in terms of food habits uh, uh, my grandson uh, is now 10 years old very smart guy uh, you need to talk to him to understand his insight and his intelligence and above all his communication skills uh, and that kind of a depth he has got only through digital learning that's a great people are talking about digital learning as a learning loss my grandson has i mean mastered in communication skill yes uh, because he, most of two years he did not go to school so anyway he is uh, my golden uh, grandson <laughs> that's what i tell him families so he has a very good balancing uh, nature in terms of adaptability socialization is an expert we yes. socialize everyone and uh, uh, in that respect i feel he is going to grow to be a very very promising uh, person i don't know what he will become but he wants to become a youtuber wow <laughs> uh, yes so that's what he says now i was fortunate to have a few moments of discussions with him sir and he is a mind blowing person that yeah. i can say i've also heard uh, that lata ma'am wrote a beautiful poem for you i'm sure it must have been very personal from daughter to father but if you could please share a few words she about has it. a good flair for writing she has also written a very short story based on my experience in my grandfather's place talchar talchar so she wrote a beautiful uh, and and she she has a plan to write further uh, above all as you said she also writes poems and uh, one of the poem which brought in uh, a lot of tears uh, welled my eyes is a uh, is a title uh, born out of heart and uh, i think uh, you should listen to that poem to know the complete relationship of a father and daughter born from my heart he held her when she was born after having waited for months which seemed so long he cuddled her through her cries and wail and laughed in joy when he saw the size of her nail he had been in his thoughts all this while he looked at his love and asked her tell me dear doesn't my daughter's nose look like mine she bought her her first gown and yes she was the new princess in town trumpets blowing and drums rolling in his head the king lay his sword to buy shoes instead this is my cinderella he proclaimed aloud however glass shoes are not safe for her at all he looked at his daughter like she was a piece of art the mother looked amazed while he said she is my daughter and she is born from my heart he pretended to be her pony on ground and crocodile in the pool and asked for a hug to accelerate when he pretended to be a car out of fuel while all the world's a stage is what shakespeare said i am the performer and my daughter is my world he said her smile and happiness was all that he sought in return how simple and lovely was the equation the daughter now wonders 30 years down he went distances for the little joys of her world which made her day and these were the things she would never ask 
and never say. She wondered how he read her thoughts and knew what's in her heart. Yes, indeed, she was born from his heart. She was now growing and a thought gripped him. What if someone stole her? What if she left his shade to experience the inviting season? He pulled up his collar and taught her the worldly lesson. He protected all along and yet made her strong for a reason. For all that had come his way and he had learnt, he passed on like a polished jewel to suit her crown. And when the day came, when he had to give her away, dressed like a gentleman, he cried like a boy while she wiped his tears away. Like a mother who bore the pain to bring her joy to the world, he bore the heart-tearing pain to let her go, to create her own little world. He had held those hands for hours together at a stretch. Now he held them and said, Take care, my little child, for you are the best. He whispers now and she hears, though miles apart, My daughter, you were born from my heart. Thank you, Papa. You're the best. Thank you, sir. That was really emotional. And just to conclude this interview, I would like to ask you one last question. How do you feel leaving behind so many things as a principal? Uh, as I said earlier, a teacher remains a teacher. <laughs> the principal retires. But the teacher in me, I am leaving behind. As a principal, I am moving out. I am also leaving behind the doyen of uh, education, the chancellor of Presidency University, the chairman of Presidency Group of Institution, Dr. Nisar Ahmed, and the emerging and dynamic leader, Mrs. Nafisa Ahmed, and a strong presidency management, and a very vibrant PSB team. But the kind of uh, collaboration, interaction, cultural acuity, talent management, curriculum transaction, children's care, safety measures, all that has come out from my heart as a teacher. Yes. And I am sure that would leave a very strong impression in their mind. And if that cultural acuity is maintained, they have everything. They have everything with them. And if they could go forward with that thought in mind, in spite of change of leadership or change of places, if they go elsewhere also, they would remain a very strong, effective teacher with a very progressive mind, which will speak about them in their career development. In fact, I hope to see most of them becoming a leader of tomorrow. Since leader's position is very vertical, it cannot happen within the school, yes. but you can be leader in various capacities within the school and also you can go out to become a leader because there is a great dearth for leaders, particularly principals in this country. Yes. So I am sure I am leaving behind a very confident, self-esteemed, cultured teachers who would speak about themselves in the near future. Thank you so much, sir. On that note, with such a powerful message, we conclude this interview and thank you for taking time out of your... Thank you, Kushbu. God bless you. <laughs>